feet. Okay, what I need you to do is take him by his feet and pull him onto the floor. Yeah, I'll do that. Gosh, he's so big. Steve, Steve. I, I understand. I'm going, I'm going to just push the recliner up, and I, I can do it. I can do this. You can. I can do it. I'm right here with you. I can do it. My husband and I, have, we have a wonderful life together, and um, Stephen was diagnosed about four years ago with cancer, and so we have been living that life, and we just didn't want our life to be defined by his disease. So actually very few people knew that Stephen had cancer. And as the disease progressed and Stephen got weaker, um, you know, I tried to really stay close where he was and um, just, um, you know, just have ordinary, wonderful days. Um, and that's what we, we did. And so every day, you know, he'd do his thing, I'd do my thing, and we'd meet at lunch and at dinner and everything. So this was an ordinary, wonderful day. He wasn't eating that much, but um, he hadn't been. And, losing weight and so that night he ate um, and uh, we were sitting at the table and he said uh, um, you know for the first time Lynn the dinner tastes so good and I said that is great honey so we got up and as we normally do and we went over to our chairs um, that we have and getting ready to watch TV and Steve said to me you know I, I don't feel good so, um, he said I, I just something I just don't feel very good and I said okay and um, he started to take his shirt off, his uh, outer shirt, because he usually kept that, and I happened to have my phone in my hand. And as I came towards him to just kind of grab his shirt for him, um, his left hand stiffened and he reared back in his seat, and I, I immediately thought Steve was having um, a seizure or a um, stroke. And all that training came in, my phone happened to be in my hand, and I dialed 911 and um, immediately someone answered and they it was a woman and she just started to she asked me questions I, I was pretty you know I was watching my husband and she the first thing she said is your husband breathing and I said I, I don't know and she said well is his chest moving up and down and I said no and she's I said no he's not breathing and she said then we need to get him on the floor and I said I, I can't do that and she said, yes, you can. She said, you need to get him to the Come floor. Come on, Stephen, I can do it, buddy. I love you. I can do it. I can do it. Let me get somebody here. My partner's already got them headed out that way. This isn't delaying them at all, okay? I know, okay. I've got them flat on the floor. And I said, okay, I can do it. I, I know I can do this. She said, you can do this. And so I pulled his feet, got him on the floor, and then she said, okay, this is what I want you to do. And she took me through CPR. Now, I had seen CPR. That's about the extent of my training. I'd seen it on TV. And over the years, I'd always said, you know, I should take the CPR class. But of course, I didn't. But with her voice, she gave me the cadence. She started it. She, she timed with me. And she, she told me to compress harder. Now, she couldn't see me. But yet, she seemed to know that I wasn't doing it deep enough. She said, go harder. And so I, I did, and I kept talking and counting, and she counted with me, and she was listening. And um, in the meantime, I was saying, I love you, Stephen, because I didn't know how long I would have him or, or if he would get through okay, this. and you're trying to pump twice every second, so at least 100 to 120 um, compressions a minute, she okay? She just kept, just count with me, count with two, me, and I one, did it, and, two, I, and one, all of a sudden, two, one, um, Stephen kind of coughed a little bit, and I didn't recognize I was into compressions, and she said, she said, is he coughing? And I said, yes, and she said, stop, he's breathing. And she said, get him on his side, and I said, he's big, I don't know, she said, you can do it. So I moved behind him and put him on his side, she gave me Stephen back, and I was able to talk to him. Stephen coded later in the ambulance, and, and um, I, I let my husband go because that's what he wanted. He couldn't be with me and be fully functional. He, we already had, we had those, we had those signed papers. But the part that I will cherish is that she kept me calm she had me do what I could do for my husband, which was wonderful, and she brought him back. I mean, yeah, maybe I brought him back, but I never could have done it without her. 
And so the thing that surprised me is I've never called 911 except when I hit a deer, I called 911. But I, I'd never thought about how I had to use 911. And I actually never thought it was in Powhatan. I didn't know where 911 was. I was just so thankful that night that they were there, that she was there, and that she kept me calm. And I will never, ever forget that night. I spoke to Stephen. I was able to say I love him. He was able to respond back to me. And that was a gift. So I was saying my sister as a physician said, that is rare, Lynn. You were given a wonderful moment in your life. And I, for that, I am so thankful.